So just some final notes on um, titrations. If you had uh, a weaker acid, the weaker the acid, the higher the initial pH is going to be. So you can see these Ka's. This is the weakest acid. That's a strong acid. Strong acids are going to start off at a really low pH, and then they're going to have this uh, huge jump up here. And the weaker the acid, the, the um, more subtle this change is going to be. Um, and you're going to start off at a higher pH. Uh, this is looking at, at uh, starting with an acid and adding a base, which is mostly what we focused on. You can also do it the other way. You can start with a base and then add an acid, titrate with an acid, and then you'll see it start off with a high pH and then it'll decrease. Um, you'll need to use a different indicator because the end point, and that's the end point over here is where the um, indicator, indicator actually changes its color. You want that to be really close to the equivalence point so that's you know, it's telling you that's indicating something <laughs> when the pH is changing. Um, so you want to, you'll, you'll switch an indicator, you'll have a different indicator. Um, you can also titrate polyprotic acid, so if you have more than one proton, you can kind of pull off one proton at a time, neutralize one at a time. You'll have multiple uh, equivalence points, so it just makes it a little more complicated. You have this different, different looking graph. So just to summarize everything, um, when you have a strong acid, strong base titration, okay, so strong acid, strong base, this is a strong, strong. All right, strong acid plus a strong base. Um, you're going to start off at a low pH, increase quickly. Uh, this is the pH on the bottom. Sorry, pH is over here, and the volume of the base added is over here. You have one, two, three, four regions. So when you first start off, all you have is a strong acid. Strong acid concentration is the same as the hydronium, so just negative log your Hydronium concentration, you have your pH. So part one, the step one, should be really easy. And then in step two, you start adding some strong base. So you have to figure out how many moles of acid you have, how many moles of base, and then subtract the difference, and that'll tell you how much extra acid you have. Divide that by the total volume. So that total volume is the volume of the acid and the volume of the base, because now that's all in your solution. Um, and then once you have that molar concentration, solve for the pH. The equivalence point, that's easy, that's where the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base, um, and the pH is going to be 7. That will only work when you have a strong, strong. If you have a weak acid and a strong base, then it's going to be really tricky. We'll talk about that one next. Uh, for after you have neutralized all of your um, uh, strong acid, then you, you're going to figure out how much extra base did you add. So if you have... Um, so then you want to find the moles of the excess base. So just subtract base minus acid. So step four and step two are really similar. Step uh, step two, you're looking at um, finding extra acid. In step four, you're looking at finding extra base. And the only other difference there is once you find that hydroxide concentration, you find a pOH and then a pH after that. For the weak acid, strong base titration, the curve looks pretty much the same, right? pH versus the volume of the base. You have one, two, three, and four. There we go. Initially, all you have is a weak acid. So you make a weak acid ice table, just the way we usually do. Solve for hydronium, negative log that, and you're good to go. And then, once you, after you start adding some base, but before you reach the equivalence point, so anywhere in this region here, right after you start adding the base, but before the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base, you're in the buffer region, the buffer zone. And so you're going to want to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation there. So you need to figure out how many moles of acid do you have, how many moles of base do you have left over. So you're going to have something like, I have my strong base plus my weak acid, I'm going to make some weak base. The only difference now between this problem and the buffer problems we did at the beginning of the chapters, you're not starting off with any weak base. You don't have any. You're going to have some of this. You'll have some of this. You're going to use up all your strong base. You'll use up a little bit of your weak acid. So then you'll end up with some weak acid and weak base. And that's what you're going to plug into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Uh, for the equivalence point, that's when everything gets complicated when you have a weak acid, weak base. So at the equivalence point now, um, oops, you're going to use up all of your strong base, you're going to use up all your strong acid, and all you have left over is your weak base. And so after you find your weak base, you have to divide by the total volume um, to get your concentration. And then you're going to set up an ice table. So you have an ice table here in step one. You have an ice table here in step three. Um, you need to find a KB. So don't forget to find the KB there. 
and what else to point out, and then you're finding a, a POH. For step four, it's exactly what you did in um, this first type of titration. You're just trying to find the excess moles of your strong base. You will have a little weak base. It's not going to contribute too much to the pH, so you're really just looking for the extra strong 